While staying in a hotel room with one of my best friends, Adriana, I had taken a shower where I used the hotel's complimentary shampoo and conditioner. When I got out, I mentioned something about how the product smelt, and that's when Adriana looked at me, dead in the face, and said, oh, you mean that white people shampoo? <laughs> and though it was funny in the moment, it made me realize that there are several inequalities in our society that we don't even think about, and this issue in the hospitality industry needed to be solved. Good morning, my name is Peyton Cranford, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of March. My passion for this project really lies in diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, and my professional background is in media buying, where I've managed over $30 million in ad spend for various clients in multiple different industries. I'd now like to introduce you to our Vice President of Hotel Outreach, Elijah Wood. Hello, as Peyton just said, my name is Elijah Wood. A little bit about myself, I've been a sales rep since 2020, and I currently market for local brands around Fort Worth. I'd also love to introduce March's incredible co-founder, Jeremiah White, who has led a startup to exit, even selling to brands like Paul Mitchell. Together, we are combining our talents to make March a reality. March is an inclusive toiletry line for hotels and resorts that has an emphasis on providing shampoos and conditioners that suit black hair. As it stands, there are zero hotels or resorts across the world that offer a complimentary shampoo and conditioner that suits curlier or coarser hair textures, which largely affects black communities. The products that they do offer really only suit 1A to 2C hair types, but black hair typically ranges from 3A to 4B, meaning they're leaving out a very large portion of their clientele. And with the black travelers market sitting at an estimated $109 billion, it is very evident that there needs to be a pivot. But you may be thinking, I thought that shampoo was just shampoo. But this couldn't be further from the truth. These establishments have products with damaging ingredients, such as sulfate, formaldehyde, and mineral oil. For those with hair types at the beginning of the spectrum, like my own, I could maybe use one of these products and not have too many damaging effects. But in all reality, these products are not the greatest for anybody's hair type, especially those with curlier, coarser hair textures. Because if they were to use these products, even just one time. It has the ability to completely strip their hair of its natural oils, leaving the scalp completely dry. So it's very evident that hotels and resorts are disregarding the well-being and feelings of a lot of their guests. And imagine if that guest was you. Yes, there are two target markets that March has to keep in mind. First, hotels themselves, and second, hotel guests. It's important that we keep in mind our end user of customers. According to a 2019 Accenture survey that collected data from 2,700 individuals, three in four stated that they would switch hospitality providers if their hotels displayed inequities. That three in four number will only grow, thus March acts as a solution for hotels as well. And hotels already agree. We've spoken to over 15 hotels across the nation and they are both receptive to our solution and agree that there needs to be a change. Depending on hotel size and its operations, we will be directly speaking to hotel managers, product buyers, and or brand teams where we will establish long-term contracts. Hotels and resorts may also utilize our wholesale inquiry form and other external wholesale sites. We operate in the US toiletries market, which is worth nearly $5 billion. When it comes to the current companies in this market, you have brands such as Mount and Getz, Nivian Morgan, Pharmacopia, and Hotel White Labels. But as we've discussed, the problem with these brands is they do not provide hotels with shampoos and conditioners that can suit black hair. In addition, although these brands have a foot in the boutique and chain hotel spaces, they still receive numerous complaints from their customers. The most common ones being the smell, the afterwash feel, and the texture, which indicates that customers are eager to convert to other brands. So that's really where March comes in. We have developed an inclusive toiletry line for hotels and resorts that has an emphasis on providing shampoos and conditioners that suit black hair. In other words, we've created a universal solution to suit hair types one through four so that hotels can replace their current options with one that is truly suitable for everybody. 
By working with our private label cosmetic chemist, we were able to develop the first variations of our shampoo and conditioner. We would love to give you samples, but our judges snagged them all from us yesterday. But ultimately, our formulas represent an optimized pH balance that allows the hair cuticle to remain moisturized regardless of hair type. The ingredients that we have chosen for our products represent a clean canvas and allow the scal scalp to keep an equilibrium. In addition to our shampoo and conditioner, knowing that hotels look for full toiletry lines, we also have a body wash, lotion, and hand soap. And all of our products are made with all natural ingredients to give every single person the best experience as possible. When comparing our solution to the competitors, although these companies are well established in the industry, most of them lack cruelty-free practices or don't contain naturally derived ingredients. But most importantly, none of these brands are inclusive, and that gives March a unique entry into the market. We are aware that our prices are slightly above that of the lower end shampoos, but as you can see, our prices are consistent with those of the higher end brands, and luckily hotels are pivoting towards better products to curate better experiences for their guests. So, the big question is, why now? Well, after seeing tweets like this, this, and this, among thousands more, it is clear that the perfect time is now. Not only will March be the first to market because we are the only inclusive toiletry line, but our inclusivity enables hotels to deploy DEI initiatives in their marketing and better serve customers. In turn, this will create a higher influx of customers and increase that retention. Knowing this value, let's talk about our market entry strategy. We were fortunate enough to discuss contract terms with Mr. Lance Marin, who sits on Hyatt's Corporate Diversity Committee. He has let us know that upon the development of our formulas, he would like to pilot test our products in five different locations around the United States. In addition to this very unique pilot relationship, we also are looking to enter the boutique hotel market space. Lastly, consumers can buy our products on our e-commerce site, even outside of the hotel room, and we've already seen a mass amount of success in terms of email subscribers that want to stay in the loop about our product drops. As for our pr pricing strategy, you can see how much it'll cost us per product up here for our two ounce and our 16 ounce options. And it's important to note that our wholesale profit margins set at roughly 49%, which is the average between our two ounce and our 16 ounce. As for our financial projections, you'll see that we'll still have some upfront costs in 2023, but then when we successfully start our pilot in Q2 of 2024, we'll receive just about $300,000 in revenue. If we're able to accumulate 15 more hotels within that year, we'll see 1.2 million. And though this number may sound high, through the mentorship that we've received from our advisory board committee, they've let us know that once you successfully start a pilot, the number of hotels that you will accumulate will rapidly increase, which is why you can see a 175% increase in overall revenue from the year 2024 to the year 2025, showing our ability to rapidly scale. With all this being said, we plan to use 50% of the winnings from TCU's Values and Ventures competition to order a small batch of product that we will conduct product testing, which we will then distribute to TCU's medical school where they will do a research case study on the chemical makeup of our products and the effects it has on different individuals' hair types. With the remaining 50% of the funding, we will use that to formulate the rest of our product line, but then also to cover rebatching fees. So, when you are investing with March, Remember these three reasons. First, we have crafted the perfect advisory board and team to execute in this industry. Second, our prototype will be tested by an award-winning medical school. And lastly, we are in line to pilot our product with one of the largest hotel chains in the world. So with this being said, we hope that you truly do march with us so that nobody ever has to question their identity in a hotel room ever again. Thank you, guys. Great job. Now we have 10 minutes. I've got a couple of questions. Um, well, great, great presentation. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I, I, too, have experienced this issue. Uh, not recently, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> But, but I guess I'm, I'm starting to understand maybe the logistics 
so you're you're pitching this product as a product that is applicable to all hair types, but you're you're in some areas you're you're marketing this towards your black consumer. So how do you how do you get across that dichotomy with the hotels where on the one hand you're saying we want this to be part of DEI efforts, we're specifically marketing this to our black consumers, but at the same time we want this to be seen as a product for all hair types and so you as a hotelier don't have to order double right. products for yeah. each. Uh, this product can serve everyone. Yeah, absolutely, that's a great question. So with the other brands that are on the market right now, they're specifically focusing on type three or type four hair. They definitely do put into marketing that they're only for those specific types of hair. So in their marketing, they're usually only showing black individuals in their marketing. So we feel like we can be really unique and get across that message is the verbiage that we're kind of using right now. It's an inclusive toiletry line, but we have this emphasis on making sure these products are suitable for black hair. And so through our marketing, we'll incorporate a lot of um, just overall diversity efforts to make sure that it's conveyed in, that me in the messaging of our brand. And we work really closely also just with people that are in the space that are travelers um, and we'll use a lot of UGC content as well as influencer marketing to show this representation in all of our marketing efforts. And then hotels will be able to deploy that as well. So it'll be in our messaging as well as our branding and marketing. Yes, and as you just said, like with black travelers, we cannot use the conditioners and shampoos that hotels provide right now. And so when we get to the core messaging of that, it's almost like hotels are saying, yes, we can take your money, but these hotels, these showers, they're not meant for you. And so we're changing that for hotels, but then that's how we're targeting black travelers to come into hotels, just so it gives that value of inclusivity, but then also that equal equality. I, I, I can appreciate that. I, I guess I, I'm struggling with how you can do both. Right, so how you mm -hmm. can market yourself as a product that is specifically for black consumers, but at the same time, market yourself as a product that's for everybody. I, I think there's a dichotomy there that right, needs right. to be worked through. Right, right, and that's, that's definitely what inclusivity is all about. I, I'm personally m minoring in comparative race and ethnic studies where I really appreciate the backgrounds of all people. And, and so um, I think where we can really appeal to specifically black travelers is, is through our messaging and through our story. Um, but I think it's a lot about advocacy and being an inclusive brand and making sure that we're appealing to those people is really, really important. Uh, but also in our chemistry as well. These products are specifically for type four hair, and by using small, small, smaller quantities for thinner, straighter hair textures, allows other people to use them as well. So this is not something that a lot of brands are doing. You'll see brands like Paul Mitchell or other brands that say they're inclusive and they have everyone in their marketing, but they're really not. Um, so it'll be a lot in our messaging. So maybe exactly. talk, can, sorry, just one second, yeah. build on that. Can you talk a little bit about the chemistry? What, first off, how did you develop it? And then is it really for all four types of hair? And if, if so, then why don't others do that? Right, very great question. So we were when we first thought about the idea, we were struggling a little bit. I was like, you know what, let me pull out of all of my products and Jeremiah, my co-founder, let's pull out all of yours and let's start going through ingredient labels, highlighting the ingredients that work well for me and that work well for him, as well as what products don't work for him and what products simply just don't work for me. And so at the end of it, I got really frustrated with all of these ingredients and I was like, you know what, Jeremiah, let me use your hair care products for two weeks and I'm gonna see what it does to my hair. My hair wasn't falling out. My hair wasn't drying out. If anything, it was slightly more moisturized than if I were to just use my regular products. And so that made me realize there has to be a happy medium for all hair types. And so we took all of these ingredients that we are, were our favorite ones from all of our products, went to our private label cosmetic chemist who's based in Minnesota, and we said, what can we do to make a happy medium? And he was like, let me pull these ingredients, you know, we'll make sure that it has a long shelf life, but ultimately uh, providing things like mango butter, acai berries, pomegranate oil, sunflower seed oil, because because these do work for both hair types. Once he gave us back our first prototypes, our team did an internal test as well as with family and friends. None of them reported back anything negative. Hair wasn't falling out. They had great things about, great comments about the smell, their feel, and that's when we realized there, there is a solution for everybody and we, we've definitely created that. So that's how we've been able to do it, by finding ingredients that are all natural. And Robert, to go back to answer your question about how do we appeal to hotels, 
In the survey I talked about with the 2,700 individuals in three and four stated that they would switch hospitality providers if their hotels displayed inequities. The problem with that is that most people don't realize that the shampoos and conditioners in hotels can't suit the needs of black travelers. So once a hotel adopts that and then they start their marketing on that, they get a huge upsurge of brand success and then there's also an uproar from different communities um, that will pressure other hotels to do that as well. And then for hotels to want to do that, they have to meet certain CSR quotas and so that would push them in that direction as well. So um, I, I loved your energy and I loved your presentation. Um, I have a couple of thoughts that I want to share with you. I heard B2C, I heard B2B, I heard boutique hotels, I heard Hyatt hotels, so I want to encourage you to get really, really clear on um, which path you're taking because all of those seem, selling to a boutique hotel is very different than selling to a Hyatt and your company and its infrastructure will have to will have to be different for both of those. So I want to, I just want to put that out there that it seems like you're trying to be a lot of things to a lot of people. Um, what I believe you're looking for is an unfair competitive advantage. This is a very saturated marketplace. I've seen lots of presentations when it comes to African American hair. Uh, it's a big, huge market. There are literally thousands of companies doing this. So what makes you different is what I want you to think about and what your unfair competitive advantage is. For me, what I heard, that pilot that's happening in Hyatt, is your unfair competitive <laughs> yes, advantage right now. I don't know, um, I don't know if you own the com all of the company, but being a woman-owned business could be, uh, I don't know if you've heard of WeBank, the Women's Business Enterprise National Council that will certify you as a woman-owned business. Uh, a lot of corporations are buying in women-owned businesses and putting the label mm -hmm. women-owned, so that might be an unfair competitive advantage. I'm just kind of digesting all of it, but. At the end of the day, you need to figure out and get really clear. B2C and B2B are two different De models. Yeah, definitely. And if you're going to go with the B2B with Hyatt, if, this is, if that is going to be your entree, your differentiator, your competitive advantage, how can you replicate that? Who is your right. customer? Is it the CEO? Is it the board member? Is it the chief procurement officer? Like, who is going to make the decision? to put your product in that hotel chain. So I want you to think about all these things yeah. as you move forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I love your suggestions too because they're very helpful for our team as well. Um, we are specifically focusing on B2B. We were actually entering the boutique hotel market space first and then once we got Lance as one of our board of advisor members, that's when he was like, hey, I'd love to do this in the Hyatt. And so that was our entry there. But then also giving people that are in the hotels the option to buy our products on e-com is kind of the, the other side of that. So not going really B2C at all, just really focusing on B2B. And then we'll be specifically talking to product buyers at these hotels, which was the recommendation that we got from our advisory teams at the, our advisory board members that work at the Hilton, as well as Hyatt. So yes, thank you so much for all you said. We're definitely focusing on that B2B route, especially because that's us beating out one competitor that the hotel already has versus thousands and thousands that are already sh sitting on the shelf, which definitely makes us unique in that sense. Thank you so much. Yes, and to add on to that, the advisory board member that works at the Hilton, Natalie Zaritsky, she is at, she's a luxury brand manager, and so she has actually brought on minority-owned uh, minority products into hotels, such as a black-owned toilet paper already. Yeah, I was going to say, we are 50% female-owned, but 50% black-owned as well. <laughs> My computer's taking over here. Yeah. I, was, I was hearing the countdown. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> so can you talk use... more about margins? Because, you know, yeah. if you're going after the Hiltons, um, it's a very competitive space. I mean, these are low-cost products. They're, mm -hmm. they're going to put you uh, on cost. So how are you solving that problem? Yeah, absolutely. That was one of the biggest things that Natalie and Lance were telling us too. They were like, our margin at hotels are very, very small. How can this product make us money? <laughs> and so that was what we really wanted to make sure that we focused on. Our costs are relatively similar to the other brands on the market, as well as our pricing. And our margins are roughly 49%. And so I, I think we're right on cue with what the other brands are already doing in this space. Um, so we're, we're fortunate enough in that sense as well, that we'll be able to be financially successful, but also provide an option to these hotels that is already working in their models already. Because 
because if we were $5 more, um, that's a little bit alarming for them. So for our two ounce, it'll cost us around um, 50 cents to about $1.26 for our small ones. And then for our 16 ounce, it'll be about $6 um, with those margins as well. So yeah, it's relatively similar to what's already on the market. Thank you. Thank you.